thing is that I have known both of these pastors ever since when they were small. And uh, so it's, but uh, they have been, both of them have been married in the past year. Uh, okay, so Victor, you first. Yeah, thank you, Pastor Jeff. Um, uh, quick quick uh, intro, I'm uh, serving as a youth and college pastor in Columbus Chinese Christian Church in Columbus, Ohio. Uh, I have been here for over 10 years now. This is now my 11th year serving here as the youth pastor. Um, uh, additionally, uh, yeah, I uh, got married at the end of May, so I'm right around two months uh, married. Um, and yeah, fun fact, um, I love hunting. I don't know very many Asians who go and hunt, but I bow hunt for deer. And um, yeah, um, that's something that I started up when I came to uh, Columbus. Okay, Joshua. Uh, hi, everybody. Um, I, my name is Joshua Ong, uh, Wang Hong. Um, I grew up in Phoenix. Uh, I have pastored from uh, California to Arizona to Columbus, Fort Worth, New York, and then now back in Dallas. Um, so I have the privilege of actually being the uh, young adult pastor to uh, Pastor Jeff's uh, son, Michael. And so, um, yeah, me and Victor are really, really good friends, um, and we have been friends for a long time. All right. Uh, a fun fact for people that who are attending, you know, the average stay or average, uh, the length of a youth pastor in America is two years. Um, that's about. And so they always tell the, the young uh, youth pastors that, that don't even sign your lease contract more than six, more than a year because they may not be there. And uh, so uh, both our uh, uh, speakers today, they are exceptional. They are way on the other end. And so their experience, their, what their advice to the parents uh, would be, uh, we need to hear them. All right. And so first questions. And uh, uh, you probably have heard that the young people have left the immigrant church. Uh, that is, but this is speaking both for the Korean, the Asians, and uh, all other churches, uh, Asian uh, immigrant churches. And but um, they rather stay, uh, they, they rather go to other churches, uh, about half of them, and even a lot of them. But then uh, we are a lot more concerned about uh, the young people, our second generation, that stop going to church because they had lost their faith. Um, Victor and uh, Joshua, uh, what do you have to say? Uh, I'm going to defer to Victor first. Uh, I'll answer second. <laughs> um, I, I think this is one thing that we need to talk to our kids about more um, and be open to the possible criticism that might come. But um, what I find is that a lot of teens leave immigrant churches because they don't see themselves as immigrants anymore. Um, there's a lot of things that are changing. Um, a lot of your kids see themselves more as Asian American than they do um, Chinese or Korean or, or Japanese or whatever other Asian um, country you might come from. So um, I think there's a lot that has to do with um, this picture in leaving an immigrant church. Uh, one of the major topics among Korean churches and I've seen among uh, a lot of Chinese churches, um, conversations, especially in California, um, there's a lot of conversations about uh, spiritual or ministerial abuse. And so this has been something that um, has been talked about more so nowadays, um, but especially in Korean churches, uh, we have a lot of Korean friends who uh, in ministry are pushed around and uh, mistreated and overworked. Um, and if that's true for the pastor, it's also true for um, a lot of the volunteers and a lot of the younger, younger folks as well. And so um, those are some of the reasons. Um, of course, there are many others, and I'm sure Pastor Josh and I will go back and forth about it. But those are the, a couple that come off the top of my head. Yeah. Okay. Um, it, is it okay? It, would, would it be okay if I code switch? Like, 
What do you want to do? Uh, if I code switch, if I speak a little bit in Chinese, because I think there was a question sure. that said tonight's isn't in Chinese. Okay. Yeah. You, yeah. you, you certainly can uh, switch. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. My Chinese is good. But if I said it wrong, please forgive me. Okay. Uh, although I'm not Chinese, I'm Chinese. I'm Chinese. I'm Chinese. I'm Chinese. I'm Chinese. I'm Chinese. Right, I'm not an immigrant. Uh, the Huachao child, but I'm from Arizona. So when I was in immigrant church, I was the second, I was the second generation in the United States. So when I was in Chinese church, it was because I love Chinese people, and I also hope that our parents have, uh, they. 到了年长的时候，他们还有一个教会，就是说我们年轻一代的开始养下一代的，呃，特别是在教会里面，我我们很多家长在自己的家庭里面都会觉得说这是理所当然的，对不对？就是说，呃，以以后孩子来照顾爸爸妈妈，那在教会其实也是一样，啊，所以他们会开始离开。我觉得失去信仰，呃，其中一个原因是因为在家里面有看到，呃，一个活生生。呃，跟神的关系，嗯、um, ，so， 呃，所以所以这个就是说，呃，我们在家里面可能说一套做一套，呃，我们可能有呃不一样的标准，我们希望他们，我们一直灌输给他们的就是说，你要追求的好好读书，你功课没有念完，你就你今天功课没有写完，你就不能去 youth group， 你今天什么什么什么没有写完，你就。哦，呃，你 SAT 没有考够高的分数，你就不能去退休会，你就不能去冬令营，你不能去夏令营。那这些就慢慢就变成说，我到了大学的时候，我的功课没有写完，我就不需要去教会；我的 project 没有写完，我就不需要参与教会。那这个，所以这个，这个从哪里来的？你,你如果你问他们，他们宁愿 socialize， 他们宁愿呃来教会，来宁愿跟他们的朋友在一起。所以有的时候这个是。呃，不知不觉，我们追求美国梦想的时候，呃，却让孩子感觉到美国梦想其实比追求基督徒、追追求基督、追求国度更重要。那呃，所、so、以这是一个呃一个陷阱 ，It's a trap that the devil gives us。魔鬼给我们的陷阱就是说，梦是睡着的时候才会发生的。Right, so God is trying to give us a reality. 神要给我们的是一个，呃，真实的一个跟他的关系，却不是一个梦。Um, so they prefer to, to attend other churches. 啊、uh, ，他们会去其他的教会，是因为，嗯、um, ，like like Pastor Victor said, uh, they understand they're not immigrants, they're American. 啊、uh, ，如果你的孩子在 Columbus 长大 ，they're the Columbus people, they're they're not Chinese. Uh, so going to a, a, another church, they don't have to be Chinese. They can just be American, just like everybody else. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. Yeah. Oh, we, yeah. OK. Um, Victor, did you understand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, uh, I think okay. I think going off of that, what about what Chen was on? Mayo again. Pastor Josh, what team the don? Because the John so not very good. Yeah, I, I agree. There's a for a lot of kids, for a lot of your kids, there's a lack of continuity, a lack of consistency between church, between home, between school, between work, and so um, and 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 all of life. And so it's not just a spiritual difference um, in, in how we. How we show or how we live out gospel life, um, but there's also a language difference. There's a cultural difference, um, and what we find at, at, and what I've seen is a lot of youth that are growing up in the church um, are very socially stunted. They're 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 unable to keep up because they're trying to work in all these different kinds of cultures all at the same time, and the consistency becomes very difficult. I think it's even harder to say. Well, the things that we do are Christian. The things that they do are not Christian, um, or 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 that these are these are the the Caucasian Christians or the American Christians are different than what we do, um, and 
and not they have trouble navigating through all that and i think that that becomes a very difficult thing well let me ask uh, um, hopefully this is a lighthearted lighter hearted questions um many many parents would uh, that says we need to have the uh, we need to get uh, youth pastors uh, because we are not uh, our our kids are not being spiritually fed um what would you say to that Victor's and um, Josh, a couple minutes. We I defer hired... to Pastor Josh first this time. Yeah, no. we okay. hired uh, youth pastors. You guys are supposed to do this for us. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I think I think the answer is yes. Um, uh, but it's it's you get what you pay for. Um, you know, in life, it, that's just the way it is. Um, I think there are quality youth pastors out there, um, but a lot of times. You know, um, I think having to uh, want a family, um, you know, so sometimes youth pastors aren't being paid enough um, to be cared for. Uh, and I think what youth pastor should really include is that you're actually a pastor of the church that's in charge of youth and family. So parents, I think part of the hardship of parents is that are you willing to submit to your youth pastor? Um, you know, do you recognize them as a spiritual authority that the church has called them to be a pastor? Um, and then are you willing to submit and say, okay, let me try what this pastor, even though he's younger than me, um, and may not have kids, but he understands and speaks the language of your kids while on the side of Jesus. And so I think um, how the youth pastor can help is help bridge that. Um, to help the older generation and younger generation see that um, there is wisdom in uh, the elderly. Uh, age does carry wisdom. Uh, so, but for, I think to model that, a lot of it is the parenting. Um, so I think the, how could the youth pastor help is, yeah, you, you should hire a, a youth pastor. You should hire a good youth pastor um, and um, not just to, um, yeah, hire a good youth pastor that is willing to coach and teach the parents how to be parents um, to immigrant children, uh, to, to, be, to be parents to Americanized, you know, a ABCs or, or yeah. Um, so yeah, don't, don't, I think it's important that we, the, the responsibility is to work with the youth pastor. The youth pastor is to equip the parents so the parents can model discipleship at home, um, because uh, I'm 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 doing college young adult right now. But if I only see the youth kids, maximum three hours a week, you you see them much more than me. But we have to be on the same team, and so that's where it's parents. Are you willing to submit to your youth pastor when they say, "Hey, maybe um, we try a different method of communication"? Um, are we willing to say, "Okay, well, let's let's try it." Victor, what do you think? Yeah, I, I think that we, we have to remember that discipleship is, belongs to the parents first. Uh, you are their first discipler. You are their primary discipler. Um, and the pastors come alongside and help. We come alongside uh, you to, to help that. Um, this week, I was actually thinking of um, what youth ministry started as. And, and a lot of time, it was for uh, orphans. It was for uh kids who didn't have parents and that yeah of course then then the ministry and the youth pastor and uh other families would come alongside and and, and raise up these younger ones as well um uh but i, I would say this uh, i know mike mcgarry uh i've met him on multiple occasions uh we've hung out together so you see the quote there and one of the things he talks about um in his book is that uh, jesus was likely leading a bunch of teenagers um they didn't have to pay the temple tax. Only Jesus and Peter had to pay the temple tax. And so the disciples are actually quite young. Um, and, and so, um, and what, one of the things Mike McGarry talks about is um, uh, the importance of the well-trained youth, youth pastor and youth volunteer. Um, it's so important, parents, um, adults, uh, it's really important at this age for them that you 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 uh, know 
and have been discipled or are being discipled in the process in that process um but also that that you're you're to a degree uh, mentally prepared to take on uh the difficult questions the hard things that maybe you never thought of and they're asking questions that you've maybe never even heard um and and mike uh mike mcgarry has said this on a couple occasions but um the youth ministry needs the most the most well-trained people um adults you can kind of forgive each other if 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 there's differences um but but kids um they're able to forgive a lot but it's really important to catch them at this time uh especially Mm -hmm. as their spiritual development is growing um Mm -hmm. don't just throw anybody in there you Let's train up and let's work together on this ministry because it's that important. I, I know that this uh, this deserves a lot more time, but then uh, just for uh, some of us that, that uh, they don't have the churches that don't have youth pastors or they don't even have uh, somebody who is helping. Uh, what what would you say? What they what could they do? Uh, I would say a big a big part of um, if you're in a youth group or in a church that doesn't have a youth pastor yet um, and doesn't have the ability uh, to hire or uh, hasn't found one, I think uh, a lot of it, you, you can learn through your parents Um, and the parents have to be willing to share their vulnerable vulnerabilities um, and how they lean on Jesus. Uh, I think, you know, um, yeah, so if you're a youth, because uh, I'm reading the chat as well. So if you're a youth, um, be humble enough to ask your parents, okay? Um, and I'm going to switch to Chinese real quick to speak to the parents. Uh, uh, um, you know, woman 这个就成为最好的这个根基 yeah, 爸爸最近工作很忙，妈妈最近工作很忙，啊，这比较烦。那可是我们继续仰望主，我们继续什么什么呀？So uh, so I think that's a big part of it，就是说，嗯，要多多啊，跟我们的孩子分享啊，神在我们生命当中的作为呀。Okay. Um, yeah, and I uh, and I just wanted to add on to that. I have a friend whose church is in North Carolina. And they didn't have a youth pastor for, and that they still don't have a youth pastor. Uh, but when I went to go visit, and I and I, over the years getting to know their youth, who are now young adults working, um, the work that some parents did in inviting the kids, hosting them, showing the love of Christ to them, showing that hospitality to them, sharing their lives with them, and then even all they had for youth group was they sat down and listened to John Piper sermons. Um, it wasn't as though the parents needed to teach. It was sitting down, working their way through scripture, praying together, loving one another, um, uh, and sharing their lives with these these kids that they've they grew up in with a with such a, a beautifully strong and and faithful faith. And so, yeah, just to also reinforce an echo of what Pastor Josh was saying to the parents as well, um, your your life shared with your kids and kids, your willingness to have the gospel enter into your life through your parents. There may be some cultural differences, but allowing them to, to influence you spiritually is very important. Your, your agreement, your will to do that is, is vital. Amen. Uh, if I could just interject that uh, um, none of uh, the, 
none, no one, no parents. Uh, one day when we meet the Lord, and uh, uh, none of us could say and uh, use it as a defense, say, "Hey, I did not. Uh, my kids strayed away from God. It's because." When we were in the city, a little small town that we didn't have, uh, our church did not have a youth pastor. Uh, and that's why my son uh, never had the proper training and then never had a spiritual uh, a growth that he should. No, pastors, youth pastors are not your excuse for not doing we, the parents' job. And But having a, a youth pastor's it can be a great help. And, uh, this is uh, a study by Barna. Barna is a, um, a organization, uh, evangelical organization that that study what's happening to our young people. And it says five top reasons the church drop out, uh, and says that they stop attending churches. And this is the young people uh, just soon after they left home, and so they said. Uh, I moved to college and I stopped attending churches. Most of them said that. Many would also says they don't like their church because they're judgmental and hyper, uh, hypocrit uh, hypocritical. And, uh, and they, they didn't have any friends in church and uh, they, don't dis they disagree with the church stance on politics and social issues. And some of them just simply said, I'm too busy. Um, uh, Josh and uh, Victor. Take on the. Yeah, what go do you ahead, think? <laughs> I was going to say you you have the young adults, so maybe not, uh, you might know a bit more. But um, um, one of the things I see here is again, this is not just a picture of Chinese churches um, or Asian churches, though in some cases it's exacerbated or it's even bigger in our context. But I see this across the board. I see this in a lot of other churches as well. Um, one of the things that I would speak to is um, one, the COVID situation and your kids having church friends and your unwillingness, um, not, I mean, I'm not speaking about particular parents, I'm just saying abroad, parents unwilling to have their kids meet up with other kids to grow that friendship. Um, um, I know last week that was talked about quite a bit, um, but the COVID situation has really broken and distance a lot of friendships we've we in our church have had to try to spend the last year trying to rebuild a lot of the friendships that uh, were disconnected during uh quarantine during COVID, during the shutdown so um i i would encourage the parents to prayfully consider um how to move forward in, in helping your kids build better friendships um, um with with other uh believing teens um the other thing i i want to say is um one of the things we need to recognize is that there are stages in your child's life and adjusting to those stages is very important and so when they're younger you can tell them what to do a lot of parents feel like when their kids get to preteen or teen their kids start to get standoffish well it's pretty normal and there's a lot of reasons for that um, i don't know if we have time to get into them today but uh, because a lot of parents still treat their teenage kids as elementary kids telling them what to do and like um, in, in some ways scheduling out their entire lives, um, the kids often aren't taking on faith for themselves and really wrestling it for themselves and making it their own. It continues to be parents' faith. So when they get to college, mama, baba, my parents aren't pushing me anymore. My, well, well, baba, mama, bu, bu. They're not, they're not pulling me anymore. Um, and so if this is the case, when they get to college, freedom. Uh, I don't have these, these pressures. I don't have this, this tugging and pulling me along. Um, and of course they're going to stop because it's not their parents' faith anymore. It's, it's, it's not even theirs. It wasn't theirs to begin with. So that's, that's part of the difficulty. Josh? Yeah, um, I think, uh, you know, moving to college, uh, it, it's and stopping to, to stop attending church. Uh, that's the one I see the most. Um, but it really goes back to, um, you know, do did our children, more importantly, more than attending church, did they have a relationship with Jesus? Amen. Um, because if they have a relationship with Jesus, they'll want to be with other Christians. 
Um, and so it goes back to what we've conditioned them, right? Their children, uh, they and and as as children um, and uh, young, you know, soon to be adults, uh, you know, as adolescent, um, what we tell them, it sows seeds, it grows in their heart. And so again, when I tell when we tell them, um, you know, you need to study a little bit harder, um, right? Like how many times have You know, I'm gonna code switch real quick. Uh, 在座的家长，我我们这这一个月，呃，读书的时候就是可能九月，嗯、um, ，you know， 九月十月 ，every month， like 你们我们会问我们的孩子，你今天写功课没有？你今天 did you finish your homework？ 你功课写完没有 ？But how often do we ask them？ 你今天读经没有？你今天祷告没有 ？Right？ And so it's not a priority， right？ I think even between husband and wife。Um, you know, we ask each other. Um, you know, uh, we we ask each other things like, um, "Did you pay the credit card bill?" Right? We ask these questions, but you know, do our children ever hear, "Baba, ni jin du jing mail," "Mama ni jin dao gao mail," right? Like we don't. If they're not hearing that at home, you know, and this is just something that we do on Sundays, then you know what? I'm I'm busy. Uh, church members seem judgmental or hypocritical.、Um, I think a lot of that goes to,、um, you know, we talk about、uh, the rules of God a lot, but、um, you know, I think the love and grace and mercy and kindness of God、uh, is sorely missed in a lot of Chinese churches because、mm-hmm. we're a shame culture.、Um, you know, so we expect our children to be perfect,、um, but. You know, it, I think it's it's allowing our children to make mistakes, right? It's allowing our children to make mistakes that are not permanently damaging to us.、Um, but、uh, a lot of times, that's why the, the church seems judgmental because the world lets them make mistakes. Oh, it's okay if you make a mistake because you know you're human.、Uh, to err is human, right?、Um, so. Uh, I think there's a little bit more grace that needs to happen、um, when people ha-、uh, make mistakes,、um, because we're all we've all made mistakes. That's the beauty of the gospel. The gospel is for sinners, which I am one of them, and、um, that's why I I enjoy it freely.、Um, and、uh, I think the the political issues is, is this:、uh, Do Democrats need Jesus? Yes. Do Republicans need Jesus? Yes. Do libertarians need Jesus? Yes, right.、Uh, I I don't. You know, like we can go further and further. Wh- whatever, whatever political party, everybody needs Jesus, and everybody is longing for social social justice. But true justice comes through Christ.、Um, but I think that's the 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 thing is that we're we're divided on unnecessary points, right? I, I'm a young adult pastor right now, so uh, you know, uh, which adds to uh. 在这个已经毕业的的的已经出社会已经在上班了，所以常常他们跟家长吵架的时间 ，like 二十三岁到二十九岁，跟爸爸妈妈吵架的，就是说哦，呃，因为他们是呃民主党，然后哦，你你 ，why did you vote that？ You know， like you， how could how could my son be so blah 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 blah？ Like it's we don't need to die on this hill。我们不需要为这个以纷争。All right.、Um, so work responsibilities. Again, I think that one is when we see parents like, "Oh, I have to work overtime, and so I can't go to church." Oh, I, I worked overtime, so I'm too tired to go to church.、Um, all of these things start. They start saying, "Okay, I can prioritize work. All right, I can prioritize schoolwork. I can prioritize、um, my job because that's what I saw at home." And so,、um, yeah. So. Parents, I know this is a big responsibility. Um, this is like, 好像压力很大。可是 yeah, like, 像呃、um, you know, Deacon Paul, 他刚刚讲的，就是说 Deacon Wu 刚刚讲的 right? 啊、uh, ，在神没有难成的事 right? So we got to rely on God, rely on the community, rely on Jesus, rely on each other. Victor. Yeah, I I, I very much agree. I think. I think the hard part for a lot of younger people too is that they're they're starting to do their own research on a lot of stuff, 
Um, they're starting, you know, and, and the hard part is some of these are true, some of them are not true. Um, teens, uh, some of your faith is built off of TikTok faith. Like it's not mm -hmm. solid. So you, sometimes when you're judgmental towards your parents, for being judgmental and for being hypocritical, that's not necessarily fair, right? Um, and then I think on the other side, uh, Fumu, your your, your um, political views and your stances aren't Christ and aren't gospel, and we need to be careful of that. You know, the the idea that um, kind of the Christian Republican conservative picture, uh, we need to we need to be careful of that. Um, not to say that there aren't things that align and talking about the issues are very, very important, but just because they're Republican and we vote them off because we're Christian is not the gospel. It's not treating these issues, uh, for issues as they are. Um, we're, we're treating them politically, uh, rather than with, with gospel and spiritual conversations. And so, um, and your, your kids will bring up challenging things. I hope that you will be willing to listen to those challenges and to work through them prayerfully together so that you're, you're walking in Christ and seeing the gospel displayed in every part of your life and, 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 and that picture uh, and, and how you all live. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, and, and the last one that, that my work responsibilities prevent me from attending, um, if, if that's true for you as a parent, that's gonna be true for your kids. Um, if that's, if, if you're, if you got that suburban house and you all are super busy and you're hustling, um, and you don't have time for church and you're not making that a priority for your family, your kids are learning that they're going to say the same things when they get to, uh, college, when they, when you're not in their home, um, my time, I, I just don't have time for it. Um, and so they're learning those things from, from you. And so, um, uh, be mindful of those as well. This is not part of what we plan. Uh, you want to tell us a little bit what made you different? Um, not, we, we don't see, I mean, we see very, very, very few of our own kids that come out and to serve as youth pastors. Uh, many of the parents will say, don't ever become like Josh or Victor's. What do you say to them? I know this is not a question that we it's, it's fun. I think that's a very fun question. Um, I think the 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 it's a we get what we want, we get what we wish for, right? So when we say everybody else's son, but not my son, um, but you know, many churches right now we have a hard time hiring youth pastors, right? Because I know many in my generation and you know, Victor's generation that was like, you know, if you go to seminary, um, I'm not gonna pay for it. Right. If you go to seminary, uh, like, uh, you know, like you're out. Right. Like and, and, and so we're, we're paying for this. We're, we are hurting our own generation. Um, uh, but I think the only thing that made me different um, was like my, my parents. Uh, I don't know if you guys know this. My parents weren't actually very happy that I went to ministry and they're pastors um, because it's hard. Uh, and every parent loves their child. Uh, but it's the aspect of my parents had to love Jesus and love that my obedience to Jesus was greater than my obedience to even my parents. So my obedience to Jesus must be greater than even to my parents, as long as it's not in sin. Does that make sense? So um, it's, um, I think, I think the, the aspect, yeah, so that's the, and I have to be willing to say, I want to follow Jesus and follow Jesus all the way. Um, and yeah, so I think the, that's the difference. And my parents, they prayed for me a lot. Um, and they told me all the time they were praying for me. Um, and so uh, I you know I, you guys, many of you guys know my parents as well. They're not perfect parents at all by any means. Um, yeah. Uh, but at the same time, I can say that, yeah, they, they prayed for me and they allowed me to, they trusted what God was doing, even if I didn't know what I was doing. Uh, because they knew that they raised me in the Lord, right? My goal is to pursue Jesus. Um, yeah. 
Victor. Uh, I'm, I'm a little different than Pastor Josh. Um, my dad is, wasn't a believer for a very long time. I had the privilege of uh, baptizing him, actually, uh, a couple really? years back, wow. which was really great. Yeah. Um, but um, my mom had set me aside. They had been uh, trying to have a child for a few years, and she prayed uh, Hannah's prayer. And so um, or originally my name was almost going to be Samuel. Um, <laughs> but uh, my dad, my dad said no. Um, but um, but my mom had always uh, in mind for me to go into ministry. And um, uh, in my fourth grade year, my mom asked me what I wanted to do when I grew up, and and I said I want to I want to be a pastor. Um, and so that's when she started to send me to Christian school, um, sent my brothers to Christian school, um, and um, and even during that time, there was a lot of struggles. My mom, my parents are also not perfect. Um, uh, even though my mom encouraged me, um, there was very little, if zero, discipleship in the home. I'm very thankful for my mom's uh, pillow at the side of her bed and her Bible open, uh, because that's where she would pray and kneel, and that pillow was there always. Uh, that Bible was there always. Um, just a beautiful reminder of her faithfulness in the Lord. Um, but also, um, yeah, there are a lot of struggles. Um, there are a lot of things that um, I would question or, or ask. And, and it was really in my junior year of high school where I had to ask God, is this really where you wanted me to go? Pastors at, at, at Greater Phoenix Chinese Christian Church where we grew up would call me pastor because they knew I was headed there. Um, but even during those years was a lot of struggle, even in a Christian school, um, trying to run away from that. And, and I had to face the facts and ask God the question if he really wanted me to do this. And so I, I left it to the Lord. I only applied to one school, to Moody Bible Institute. I said, God, if you really want me to go, if you really want me to be a pastor, you'll get me in. And my mom was like, are you sure you don't want to apply to any other schools? Are you sure? <laughs> and uh, and I, and I um, with confidence, I was like, yeah, it'll be fine. And I got in and and ever since has been looking not, not uh, there's been no looking back. I think God has um, been faithful and um, that call was very strong for me. Um, my mom was my mom was, uh, of course, very supportive. My dad uh, was more of a standoffish dad. So he he kind of was like, well, as long as they do what they're happy, um, then fine, then fine. And to a degree, that was a grace from God, uh, I think. And so. Um, yeah, so that that's kind of where I've come from. Yeah, I got sent to Christian school too, but that was because I was fighting every day in uh, elementary school. So it was completely different. But you know, God uses broken pieces, and um, you know, and uh, so yeah. Yeah, so there's no formula, you know. I, I think that's what we have to recognize. You know, God's grace um, pours out, and and yeah, yeah. Um, there's no formula for that. Mm -hmm. but be faithful. I, I, be faithful. Yeah. yeah. But I, I think every kid need to be like Pastor Victor to see your, to see like his mother's prayer pillow where mm -hmm. she knelt and prayed. Mm -hmm. And uh, our kids, your kids and young people that uh, is, is looking for where in the house is where my parents are praying and wh how they pray about for me. It's not just for, for me to go to college and for me to, to make a lot of money. And so, um, hey, um, thank you so much for sharing that. Um, that I, I know that was not a question that you were ready to, to answer. Uh, but let's talk about uh, um, people that, uh, young people that already kind of lost from faith, um, that the prodigal kids already. And kids that uh, or young people that their the parents are wondering what could I do? Can God bring them back? What do you say to those people? The the, the and or the, the the young people I know they're not here, uh, but speak to their friends and uh, also the parents. Can you? Yeah, a lot of prayer. A lot, a lot of prayer. Um, so, um, like I've seen it, I've seen it. Lots of uh, college students who walk away, and then later on in life they come back. Um, so even in my own friends, uh, sometimes it's when they have a kid that when they have their own children, and then they say, 
what am I supposed to do with this? So I remember my parents brought me to church and I turned out okay. Um, there's that um, out of necessity. Um, but I, I think uh, a sum that I've seen is when uh, the parents actually pursue their child as a non-believer, right? I know we all have like Chinese churches, we love evangelism programs, right? Like, oh, we have like, I've heard of like, oh, happiness group. I don't know if you guys have done happiness group, right? Um, I've heard of like, um, you know, like uh, celebration Sunday, celebration, like we do all of these things to evangelize, but we do none of those things to evangelize to our children. And I think it's sad, right? Like, it's like, we'll, we'll, we'll have birthday parties. Oh, we're having a birthday party. Oh, my child is whatever. Hey, uh, well, the mudao yo pengyo, please come and let me share with you, Jesus. Are we willing to say, Hey, uh, son, where do you, uh, daughter, children, like, uh, you're graduating. Uh, where do you want to go on vacation? Right? Like, let, let me go on vacation with you. Right. Um, uh, and, 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 sh- and, and in this aspect, pursue them. Um, and so, yeah, encourage them. And, and I think part, uh, pers- really pursue them you, the way that you would pursue those that you're trying to win through your evangelism, you know, um, small groups, your evangelism training. And so, um, I think a, a big part of that is to, um, yeah, pursue them again. I, like, how can I be praying for you? Uh, I, I work must be hard, um, you know, like, and yeah, like if you need wisdom, we're here for you. I think it's, it's the remind being reminded of, you know, instead of just the prodigal son, um, you know, we're always reminded it actually should be called the parable of the good father. Amen. Right? The, that, that, the prodigal son goes and does a bunch of crazy things and the father runs and embraces him. And I think, um, you know, uh, sometimes parents, we speak in anger. Um, and that's why scripture tells us to be, you know, slow to anger, right. Uh, quick to hear, quick to listen, but, uh, slow to speak, slow to anger. And so this aspect for us is to not blow up. If they come back with earrings, they have earrings. They, they can take them out later, right? Like if they come back with the tat, it's a little harder. But you know, like uh, I think it's just to be to 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 love them and pursue them the way that we would love and pursue anybody that's lost. Um, I think that's where I saw the the difference. Um, and we're reminded in Romans, it's it's God's kindness that leads people to repentance. It's not His Amen. anger. So yeah. Yeah. And I think on that note, too, is this I think parents like pursuing them with the mentality of you're reaching their heart um, and withholding the judgment of their actions and their behavior. Um, they, they have to be responsible for those things. Right. Um, but um, I think sometimes parents, we assume that our kids are believers and therefore uh, they're going to behave a certain way and um, uh, pursuing them like you would pursue your neighbor. who You don't know. Uh, who's maybe um, living a very, very uh, anti-Christian lifestyle? How do you how do you love them well? How do you how do you care for them well? Um, um, even as they're treated, and, and Romans, right? Um, uh, that we are to love our enemies. Um, sometimes your kid can feel like an enemy. I know we say that they're blessings; they are, uh, but that's, sometimes they can feel like enemies. And learning how to um, love them well. Um, really is putting hot coals on their head that they can walk away um, blessed by you um, and they don't have to be Christian to be blessed by you. Um, I think that that's an important part of loving them well. Um, Jeff, uh, I, I didn't share with Jeff this story. Um, one, of my, one of my cousins uh, reminds me often of a time when you challenged him in his beliefs and in his thinking. Uh, in fact, you challenged so deeply that of all the of all the lessons you ever taught in his Sunday school, this is the the one lesson uh, was the one that you taught when you asked my family, <laughs> who are restaurant owners who bring Sunday lunch, um, and asked them a really pertinent question, him a really pertinent question, which was, um, Jesus turned over the tables at at the temple for selling things. How come we're allowing your parents to sell things at church? And it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't a uh, um, a press against what we're doing, but it was a challenge. Well, how do you, how do you justify this? How do you, how does this work out? And, and all that to be said is, um, parents, 
um, yes, be in prayer for your own kids. But your involvement, your uh, taking those regrets and making them motivations to care for kids that are not yours is really important. Um, your kids, and, and this comes from Sticky Faith, um, your, your kids need adult friends. And not just young adult friends, not just college friends. They need adult friends. Um, and Jeff, uh, I'll say this, that Jeff, Jeff at that time cared about my cousin and enough to challenge him and, and challenge him to walk faithfully. Um, and, and, and so, um, uh, by the way, a, a good book uh, is Prodigal God by Timothy Keller, which talks about God being a good father and all the things he pours out to his prodigal son. Um, so I, I, I would also uh, encourage you to consider reading that yeah, as well. Yeah, uh, you know, just to add to that, uh, uh, you know, Pastor Jeff, your, your wife, um, Pearl, I've been yelled at maybe by yes. every single auntie in church, <laughs> except Pearl. And I remember, mm, mm. right, it's her kindness, because she was the only yes. one that was kind, like, super kind to me, because I was annoying, mm -hmm. but she was kind, and, and I, I will always remember that. And mm -hmm. um, so it's something beautiful that it was different, right? I, like, I, I got yelled at by everybody. I was okay with that. <laughs> you know, like, I was like, whatever, I'm not going to listen to you anyways. But, you know, when she was kind, like, please mm -hmm. sit down, like, what? there's an adult saying, please to me. What is this? What I, I should sit down. This is scary, you know? And so, um, there's that. Um, I think, uh, you know, uh, there's a really big name speaker named John Piper. Uh, mm -hmm. his son actually walked away from Jesus, Abraham Piper. Yep. Yes. And he prayed, he prayed and prayed and prayed. And then Abraham Piper, his testimony is really funny. And then, um, he's like, went to college, hated Jesus. Cause his dad was always busy um you know with with church ministry so if you're if you're on a pastoral um you know deacon board and uh, give your pastors a bigger break so their pks don't hate the church all right um but anyways abraham piper his testimony is that he bought a pack of cigarettes and opened uh, the gospels and said i'm gonna read this for the first time and he goes by the time i was finished with my cigarette i believed in jesus and and so this is the thing when i say that to you our gut reaction is like <gasps> smoking a cigarette. You missed the story. A man came to Christ when he read the Bible for himself, not just hearing what his parents said, but he had to do it on his own. Right. Like, so his parent, his dad is John Piper. Right. Like, but you know, like, so be kind. People have a journey and, you know, some mistakes, most mistakes are short term. You know, but if we if we are overly critical, sometimes it becomes a permanent mistake. And so, yeah, be, let's let's be more gracious and pursue them. Um, yeah, I think Abraham Piper has his testimony. I'll, I'll find it. I'll, I'll send it to uh, Pastor Jeff and Pastor Jeff. You can send it out to them as stories about prodigals that came back later. OK, uh, for uh, all of our listening audience, uh, we are committed. Uh, we are committed to to help you and and to, to see your team growth and we are we have a soft very soft spot in our all our hearts for uh, the, our young people who have walked away from their faith and uh, we have and we and the the ministries involved we are uh, we are determined to help, um, the parents of prodigal kids. Uh, so um, stay with us, and uh, we have more, and and, and that's what we do. Uh, wow! Uh, thank you for sharing. Uh, I I know when I was younger, I still probably is. Uh, whatever I said in church really hurt some people. That uh, and Victor, and please tell your cousins. I I yeah. I think I remember what I said. Yeah, uh, it wasn't hurtful, and it was encouraging because you turned it around. You 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 shared with them the gospel. You shared with them. Uh, you shared with them why it's okay to 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 serve food at church, and uh, they just remember that it was it was grace giving, challenging, right? Um, that yeah. they weren't just comfortable in their seats as Christians. And so again, yeah, a really well. Uh, for 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 people who don't know, later on I went on to teach. 
uh, and share uh, a lot of the time in the churches around the world about your uh, your families and your cousins who uh, who sell boba tea in the church and to raise funds for mission funds. And uh, so please tell them that. Uh, uh, okay, alrighty. Uh, I think we will pause here. Uh, if there are any questions, and uh, we'd love to open up to hear, uh, to, to hear. Um, and you probably already uh, read, and then uh, Victor and uh, Joshua, if may, maybe you can answer some of the questions. Uh, we were allowed uh, 15 minutes for uh, question and answer, and then we will ask um, both um, uh, Victor and Pastor Josh to pray for your kids. Pray for parents and pray for the youth who are uh, attending today. Yeah. Any questions? Now is a good time to answer. I enjoy being a disc jockey. Yeah. This is fun. Um, we would love to hear if, uh, from you. Uh, how many of you uh, are from churches that have no youth pastors? Yeah, if, if you can just kindly type it into a, you don't have youth pastors, yeah. Victor and Josh, and how much do you guys get paid? Oh, no, 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 don't, don't, don't answer that, don't answer that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. so. Um, I and I know for fact. I saw the uh, room chat. There's a one question. Both pastors, would you provide some already available resource to help parents to coaching and uh, evangelize our, ch our children? Yeah, there's one question. OK. Um... Those yeah. are the resources, that, yeah, how, how to raise your kids, yeah. Yeah, and unfortunately, I think um, the hard part is, is it's, there are some resources, I think, generally for evangelizing, um, and there are some good articles. For instance, Rooted Ministries is an is a, a organization that I, I, I um, a retreat I go to, and as well, like, a resource. Uh, Rooted does a lot of material for parents, um, so I, I would... I would really suggest that I'll put up the website here in a little bit. Um, but I think there has to be a mentality shift and that that's more important than necessarily like reading the books. Uh, I mean, I think the books are very helpful, but this mentality of my kids need the gospel. My kids need gospel grace. My kids uh, need, need love more than best behavior, um, more than a successful life even. Um, and I think that mentality shift is uh, you got, starting there is very, very important. So my challenge is this. Um, if your church has a English sermon time, English service, um, and your Sunday school is at the same time as your children's English service, my challenge is that once a month, Go to their service so you have something to talk about with them at home um you know um that's my always my suggestion because you can go to their language service they can't go to yours so i would say a big part of that is that then you it helps you as well like oh okay well hey the pastor today oh your pastor said da, 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 da today like, oh, how can we, how can mom do this? How can dad do this at home this week? And how can we encourage each other to do this? Um, and, and, and how can we do that? Um, does that, uh, you know, that's a free one, right? Like if you already have an English pastor, um, but if uh, English service, um, so once a month, uh, go, go visit your, your, the English service. Um, yeah, that costs you nothing but your time. And you're already at church anyways. So, and, and one of the beauties of, some of these churches is those set services are staggered. And so um, being able to go to that, that service, talk with your kids. Um, currently, we put up questions in English, or I put up questions in English service for um, congregants to take home and to talk about them at home. 
um, we started to position our services to preach in the general same area. Right now, our church is going through the book of Acts. And so parents can talk to their kids and ask questions. But um, um, uh, picking off of uh, Pastor Josh's is um, ask questions. <laughs> ask questions of your kids. I think a lot of times when you're having conversations, they end up being like lectures. Um, and asking what your kids really think and being careful, right, not to judge quickly but asking more questions to investigate more, understand more, um, and acknowledging the good things that they are saying, um, asking clarifications of things that maybe you don't understand or, or that um, seem strange or, or uh, are contradictory. Um, and, and trying to help them to work out the words as well, I think is, is very beneficial. Yeah, and, but, and, and I, I don't mean like you have to sit next to them and try to embarrass them, you know, like, but I think it's like, just sit, sit with the other parents, um, invite, invite other parents and say, hey, our, our kids are in youth group together. Let's go to the English service at least once a month, right? And this way, um, you know, we can have conversations with them. Um, you know, uh, that, that to me is a big one. Um, we have a question here as a youth pastor, what is your biggest challenge um, that you're facing right now? I don't know, Victor, what do you, what is your, I, I, I'm dealing with college kids more, but yeah, I guess they're kind of youth, but Victor, what's, what's the biggest? Yeah. So like, I, I guess some of it is like, what's personally, right. I think Josh and I have talked about marriage a little bit and like, that's one of the challenges we're working through because I think we, we grew up as like hardworking restaurant kids. Um, and so going into church was also that. And so switching over to married life and, and trying to prioritize that time, um, I know has been a really big challenge for me. Um, and guess what? Your kids are learning the same stuff because you know your kids are, are also being pushed um, in their time. Uh, maybe your kids are going to bed super late because they're just so overburdened with stuff. Um, learning how to rest well, learning how to rest in the Lord well for ministry has been a huge lesson that I've been trying to learn, um, especially recently dating and now into marriage. Um, and this is not laziness, but it's it's good and proper rest and trust in the Lord while being faithful and responsible in, in the task um, that I have. Um, I, I think too is um, there's a push and pull between parents and youth ministries um, where the reality is like, youth pastors want you parents and even parents who are in empty nesters or parents who are um uh, retired to enter into youth ministry um, um to to partner with the pastor um they don't have to be your kids and i think one of the difficult things is um uh recently is things like finding volunteers um teaching sunday school but these are all activities you know um, but really it's the, it's the partnership. And sometimes, honestly, a youth pastor feels lonely, um, for the Asian youth pastor. Um, sometimes it feels like parents are expect you to do it the Asian, the Chinese way. Uh, oh, you're the youth pastor. You should know this. So you should push this with our kids. Um, and then the Caucasian pastor, um, is kind of like, well, you don't know our culture, so just take care of the kids and we don't want to, we're not going to talk to you about stuff. Um, so, so there's this kind of cultural pull there, I think sometimes um, is in the mix um, that can be difficult. And um, I've learned a lot of lessons from Pastor Josh over the years, you know, when somebody says, hey, Pastor, Pastor, this is a great idea. I think we should do this. Okay, let's pray about it. And let me know when you want to, you want to volunteer for that. <laughs> um, I think that's fine. That's very good and wise words. Um, but um, yeah, uh, yeah. So some of them, some of the other challenges are like, man, my, my heart breaks. Um, and, and I hope you know this. I hope parents, you'll know this kids, you'll know this too, but my heart breaks when I hear of kids walking away and know that I love your kids. Um, know that your, your youth pastor loves your kids and you're not enemies. Um, you're actually partners. And I hope you'll understand that. Um, Amen. it breaks our hearts, you know, and it's not because we're the pastor. It's because we, we really do love them. Yeah. And I hope you know that as well. Yeah, I think one of the biggest uh, challenges that I see in like ministry right now is the oversaturation of technology. Um, like there's just too much, like if this was five years ago, um, you know, me and Pastor Jeff would have flew out to see you guys, you know, somewhere. And um, 
Columbus, right? Because, you know, Victor's there. And um, so I'm, technology is good. I'm not saying don't use technology, uh, but it's the oversaturation of technology. Um, so that's going to be a hard one in the, in the near future. Uh, yeah, their entire life is online. Um, and so, yeah, like use technology, but it's a tool, right? So tools, that's, that's just what I see. It's this hyper addiction. Um, they're together separately. Everybody's in a circle. Everybody's looking at their own phone. Everybody's doing their own thing. Um, and that's at, in the church, you know, um, lobby, right? Everybody is standing in a circle looking at their own phone. And that's hard. That's really tough. Um, and then the depression that comes with it because they're seeing people have this, people have that, and they don't, um, you know, so social media, uh, those are some of the things that, um, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Instead of being a tool for building community, it becomes a substitute for it. And I mm -hmm. like, yeah, I mean, oh, we're, we're online playing video games together. That's a kind of community, right? And the reality is it's, it's not, you know, it's an activity they're doing together, but they're not really growing to love each other. Well, there's teamwork involved, sure, but um, it can often be that addiction level or that to that point where it's not a tool, it's a substitute. 